this past weekend, I was given the honour. I was given the honour and the privilege to DJ an event on, what, Saturday? Right, th this past Saturday, which was really fucking fun. I'm not going to lie. So big up my nigga Bond. Big up Bond for inviting me. Really do appreciate that. And it was called um, Silence of the Acid. Obviously a play on the, you know, legendary movie, Silence of the Lambs. And I have to be honest, it was a real blast. I have to be honest, it was a real blast. Number one, it was a blast because it got me out of my house. Because as you guys know, I'm a bit of a homebody. I tend to kind of cut off communication with real life and with real people for the most part. I tend to kind of lock myself indoors, especially because I work indoors. I don't tend to really need to go outdoors anymore. So I tend to kind of keep myself to myself. But it did kind of force me outside and communicating with human beings. And you know what happened? I actually realized why I'm so in love with fucking nightlife and clubbing and shit. The night itself, you know, it wasn't a lot of people there. It was fairly empty. Don't get me wrong. It was mostly friends there watching us play and shit, which was nice regardless. It was a nice venue in Brixton. It was this like kind of bar place that was really kind of cool. It was on the strip where there was loads of bars. Actually, you know what? That whole place, there's this place in Brixton, which is just behind the station, actually. Like if you come out the Brixton station and you turn, you turn left and then you turn left again onto that kind of like market road, there's like loads of like bars around there. I'm sure if you've been to Brixton, you know what I'm talking about. And that whole entire area reminded me of Dawson. It reminded me of Kings and High Street. It reminded me of Shoreditch. It reminded me of um, even like Homerton, Haggerston, when it was popping back in the day. And nowadays, because of the flipping horrible Hackney Council licensing laws, there's hardly any clubs and bars in the area. But that whole entire area was bustling. There was so much energy, so much vibes, so much ambiance. People just shouting, screaming, music coming out of the bars. People frolicking around. People smoking outdoors, saying hi to their friends, jumping out of Ubers. It reminded me of the heydays, honestly, of that whole entire strip from like Liverpool Street Station all the way until like maybe like, I don't know, Stoke Newington. If you know, you know that entire strip was bustling back in the day. But Hackney Council, they did a fucking good job of fucking clamping down on all of the fucking clubs. They absolutely exterminated it. Like, I think they've got this really strange law. I think licensing law in Hackney that essentially, if you want to open, a, if you want to, if you want to have a nightclub in Hackney Council, I'm pretty sure there's some law that kind of prevents you from opening after 12. So you have to apply for a special license. So every time you put on a party, it's like an exception. It's like, an, you know, you get, no, you, you get an exemption to open that long. It's not like the norm, you know? So you might have to go through that whole process. And you also have to play nice with the neighbours. Because the neighbours are the ones who are on the committee who basically get to approve your application or not. And now, don't get me wrong. The Hackney, like, Hackney homeowners have a lot to complain about especially the ones that have had like council houses in and around that area. Like I remember watching this one documentary about how horrible it was. And I don't envy people that live in that area because if you know anything about the area, when it was bustling after 12, 1 a.m., it was like a zombie town. There'll be people coming out of bars, smashed high, looking fucking awful. And obviously these people were worse, you know, worse for wear. They'd end up fucking throwing up outside people's homes, pissing on their doorsteps. And I remember one particular one, there was this guy who lived like in this block of flats that was near a bar. And obviously, for some reason, like, you know, if you know, if you know, you know, like in a hood, usually those block of flats, the doors are usually always open because they're hard to kind of, you know, I don't know. People lose their keys all the time. So sometimes the, the, the neighbors just themselves will decide to maybe unlock the magnets or keep the magnets on the top off. So if you just like pull it, it will open. So obviously everybody figured this out <clears throat> and local people who, you know, club goers will start using that little bit that you walk into a flat where you just walk up the stairs. They'll use it as a, as basically an unofficial toilet. So, so you can you imagine if you're a parent taking your kids to a school run in the morning, you know, like let's say the Monday morning after a night out or, or even just say the Thursday, right? After fucking a Wednesday, you're taking your kids out to school and you're walking down the stairs and it's just your whole fucking staircase just smells of piss. So I can understand why they were so harsh in terms of closing down some of the clubs and the bars. But God almighty, man, they took away all the soul, the life out of Hackney. It's completely gone. It's dead. It's devoid. If anything, the only thing giving that place any sort of vibe is basically what? The Turkish shops <laughs> and some of the second hand shops. So going to fucking Brixton was a real kind of, it, it was like stepping back in this time machine. Because it felt like how Hackney used to feel. And that's what used to make London good. I'm not going to lie. 
London used to be fun like that because no matter where you lived in London, you had your little, you, like within your area, you had like your little spots. You had one bar, you had one club, um, you had a place to go get your groceries. You didn't need to travel all around. But now because London is so devoid and crap, like for sure for the owners of Fold, it's amazing. For the owners and the founders of Fold, it's amazing because now everybody kind of congregates and goes to their spot because it's the only good club we have. But I don't think it's good for the overall customers because we don't have a good range of clubs. We only have one good one and the rest of them are just playing catch up. You know what I mean? Venue, MOT, Color Factory, they're all a bit shit because there's not, you know, all the different areas in London have different licensing laws. One place can stay open until 12, one place can stay open until 2, one place can stay open until 6. It's all over the gaff. So there's not a, a good even spread of good clubs. So everyone just goes to that place where he stays up until six and leaves it alone. Anyway, long story less long. The, the club night itself wasn't that successful. Wasn't that many people there, don't get me wrong. But still, nice to have people playing, you know, in front of people. Nice to be able to play music loud on a sound system too. A big up Bond also for inspiring me now to actually legitimately go forward and go flipping, um, start my own night again. Because this guy went over. Him and his friend went overboard in terms of hiring equipment and shit, like, they did it really fucking well, they were, they were fiddling around with the audio, and making sure the speakers are pointed in the right direction, just taking care of stuff, you know what I mean, just like, putting a, putting a lot of care and attention to something that, probably didn't need to put attention into, they could have just rocked up there, and used whatever decks that was available, but they went and hired some more decks, so we had like four turntables, we had a really nice mixer to play on, all the knobs were on there, it was such a good fucking vibe, and it legitimately reminded me, of like what nightlife is about like that little community that we had inside that club which was like i don't know 20 or people of us right that little community you know, shared interest hanging around you know maybe going into the toilets and doing some multivitamins hanging out afterwards going to the afters all that sort of vibe was really fucking cool but the main thing that i loved about it the main thing that i loved about it i was reminding myself man this is why nightlife is undefeated and this is why i'll never stop going out it's the walk to the club the walk to the club from the station oh, or out of the Uber. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me and I have this like grandiose image of myself and I always kind of picture myself in a movie or something. <laughs> right? I always, I always think I'm in like a scene in Lost in Translation. But I swear to God, that walk, <coughs> especially outside of our Brixton, because Brixton's fucking bustling, right? It's a fucking rumbunctious, um, you know, uh, area full of different people from all over the world and shit so it's fucking high octane high energy and you're just walking through there in your little outfit feeling a little bit cute shaking your fucking dairy air you know little wink little smile little nod you got your tunes playing on your fucking headphones you're about to rock up like oh i love it i love everything about it man so that was really fun it was really fun to play my set um unfortunately i didn't get a chance to record it I was a bit worse for wear by the time I started. Big mistake for me, but we moved. So what I'm going to do going forward is I'm going to record that set that I planned for the um, Silence of the Acid. I'm going to record it. You know, I've got to pirate record it. And obviously, I'll put it up on, on fucking on my SoundCloud and it'll be available also on my specific and standalone DJ channel, which is called Persistence Radio, which you can find if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find a link there. I also put a link in the description as well, and I'll put it up on there. So that's what I'm going to be doing going forward as well. Um, that's going to be really, 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 really fun. But big up Bond, honestly, I had a great fucking time, really good, definitely re energized me, re reinvigorated me, and made me realize just how amazing DJing is. And that's something I've always kind of loved about it because I don't play golf, you know. So I think the older you get, you start to like have hobbies you just do for the fun of it. And I think one of the good things about DJing is that it's a sick hobby. It allows you to play music aloud. It allows you to kind of, you know, discover new tunes. It allows you to be a little bit of a of a geek about something and kind of go down rabbit holes and be finding weird YouTube channels, be finding weird vinyls on Discogs, be scouring Beatport, Juno, Hardwax, you know, fucking um, all these other places, right? And it kind of makes you kind of re it re energizes you, and you can't wait to kind of show off some of that musical stuff that you've kind of been digging when you go and play. I lost my headphones. It's a blessing. It's a blessing and a curse because I've had I've got these phonons that I've, that I've bought from this Japanese country. It's com com this Japanese company called Phonon that make really high end audio equipment, and I've got these headphones from them, special edition ones um, that were made in collaboration with Innovision. So I've got them, but I don't use them because I'm afraid I might lose them or break them. So now I'm going to use them. And obviously I've got the second pair as well. 
Um, I've got another black pair that I bought when they did a Kickstarter. So I'm going to start using those now going forward because I've realized, and this is something that's going to be a controversial opinion, but I swear to God, right, my controversial opinion is this. I legitimately think the Sennheiser HD 25s are kind of overrated. I'm not going to lie. I've not really been enjoying using them anyway. I need to discover, I need to find some new headphones to use because I think they are grossly, 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 grossly overrated. I swear. I've bought two, no, I've had, I've had two brand new ones and I bought one second hand. The two brand new ones I bought have had cable issues. Like the, 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 the cable that goes into the earbuds, they've kind of been a bit loose. And these are brand new ones from Amazon. Brand new box fresh ones. And then obviously the one that I bought that was used also had an issue with the buds. Now the thing is with the ear cups, over time, if they break, you can obviously replace them. That's the thing that's good about the Sennheiser HD25s. They're basically modular. The entire thing can be replaced. You can replace the straps, you can replace the cushioning, the cups, um, you know, whatever, all this can be replaced. Because you see DJs have like, literally, like I think I saw Senti, I think it's Sinti, sorry. The house DJ Sinti, I think I saw her have a pair of HD25s and she had like neon green ear cups, neon green, um, headband cushions and whatever so you can literally change it modularly and obviously the sound quality is really good and they're obviously the go-to headphones that all djs wear but i swear on my life maybe i've just been unlucky with the three that i bought legitimately i bought two new and i bought fucking um one second hand and they've all died on me they've all died on me all of them have died on me they're pretty shit quality i'm not going to lie and the last ones i bought were these i bought these ones which i think were the yellow cups i think they might have been like the 50th anniversary or something like that i think so i think it might be a 50th anniversary so i'm not that impressed with hd 25s i end up losing the ones i got to when i went to go and dj but to be honest they weren't really working well anyway the left ear cup was a bit ratty so i'm happy they're gone and now i can start using my phone a bit more and to be honest what i'm also going to do i'm going to start going to using i'm going to start using these these monitors i got big up to um i forgot who got who got these for me big up keith i think keith got these for me um these monitors right these sign has the monitors i used to podcast i'm gonna start using these now because i saw a, a video of zach fox playing with these on at a boiler room i've seen another video i think i saw dj swisher and a few other people there's been a ton of people i've been seeing recently who, who are wearing now in studio because these, these are what they call studio monitors so i've been seeing a bunch of people wear studio monitors as DJ headphones, because DJ headphones usually have smaller cups, so you can kind of like, you know, get them on on and off really easily over your ears. But studio monitors, obviously, are meant for you to use in the studio to obviously monitor whatever tunes you're making. But I might switch and start using these um, studio monitors because honestly, the HD 25s are so overrated, in my humble opinion. I could be wrong, but I honestly think the HD 25s are one of the most overrated pairs of headphones. Like, legitimately, too new, broke. The one that I bought secondhand also was broken. Well, it broke after, you know, only a small period of time. And again, these last few years, I haven't been DJing that much. I haven't really been DJing outside. So it's not like I've been wearing, the wear and tear has been excessive and I've been beating them around and stepping on them. No, I've just been playing here and there when I go to private studios. So it's like minimal wear and they're fucking breaking all the time. So I don't think HG25s are that great. I think they're very really grossly overrated or maybe I just might be unlucky, but I am looking forward to finding some new DJ headphones. So I'm going to be using these monitors for now and obviously my phone ones. But if you have any recommendations of DJ headphones that you think I should try out, um, I might even see <clears throat> if that, what's that company called? I think it's like I, 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 um, I, I forgot. I don't know where they're from, but they make pretty good DJ headphones. Two people talk a good game about them. So if you have any recommendations on DJ headphones that I could wear or things that are similar to HD 25s, please let me know. Um, you know, the contact link will be in the description of the podcast if you're watching it. And obviously if you're on YouTube, just leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear some of your suggestions. I'd love to hear some of your suggestions.